Okay, so today I actually made a really amazing find. And so for uh, those who follow my channel, you know that I'm looking for the oldest mines in Connecticut using LIDAR. So I'm trying to find the mines that were worked before the Revolutionary War going all the way back to the 1650s using LIDAR. And that's my main objective. But I'm also out there looking for antiques and objects from that same time period. So things dating to the 1600s or the 17, early 1700s that were used in colonial America. So not European um, artifacts, but American 1600s and early 1700s objects. So today I made an absolutely amazing find and, it, and, it, and I didn't even realize what I had found when I found it. So um, for those of you who know me, you know that my dad um, deals in antiques and he told me about a house in Northern Connecticut, and I'm not gonna disclose even what town it's in, that was full of antiques. And he went up there and he bought some grandfather clocks and an antique gun. And the antique gun turned out to be a Hudson Valley Fowler from the 1760s, which piqued my interest. And just Thursday, I went up to the house, and today I went up and visited with the, the guy that's um, liquidating the estate. And what I found was absolutely amazing. So I purchased several guns from this person, which I'm gonna show you now. Um, so this is actually a barrel, uh, probably from a brown bess. Here's a, an old cut down brown bess from probably the time of the American Revolution. Another musket barrel here. Not sure which um, musket this belonged to, but probably Revolutionary War era. Here's an old fowling piece. Look at this, this is probably mid 18th century. And this is an old rifle. So this is actually a mid 18th century rifle. You can see how wide the butt plate is. And you can see the, someone carved Marden mock in the stock, unfortunately. But this is a, this is a really early one tell by how this trigger guard kind of kicks out here. And here's the Hudson Valley Fowler that I bought, um, that my dad found at the house. So this is probably 1760s, made in New York State. And you can see the all the relief carving on the stock. It's missing quite a few parts, unfortunately. And it's a really long gun. It has like a 54 inch barrel or so. Here's a barrel, a very interesting barrel because it's actually like a bell-mouthed barrel. This may even be like a matchlock barrel. This could be really early with this bell mouth like this. But um, we have more. So here's an old piece of a broken pistol. Maybe they used this as a club when after they used their one shot and it broke during some war. And this here appears to be a Hudson Valley Fowler. It has a club butt stock and it had this kind of serpentine like trade gun type side plate. But the most interesting one is actually the the least fancy, this one here. And it's pretty plain. There's there's no butt plate. It has a club butt stock and it's maple. So the thing that's interesting about this gun is that it's possibly 17th century American. So it could be an American made gun from the 1600s, which is incredibly rare. And by American made, I mean basically parts that were restocked in America. So the barrel and lock were probably made in Europe, but it was one of the very earliest guns to be remade here in, the, in America. And I'll show you a few more details on this gun. So when I found it, it was in a really dimly lit spot and I knew it had an interesting stock architecture with the club butt shape and it was really primitive, no butt plate, uh, no side plate, just really plain. And I know that guns like that were made all the way up through the 18th century and even into the 1800s with that kind of early club butt architecture. Uh, so I didn't really think too much of it until I got back and I took a look through this book. I just 
just took a look. There were some very strange stylistic features on this gun. Very, very strange that I had never seen before, which almost led me to, to think it was homemade, like something made on a, a farm or something like that where they didn't have any gunsmithing skills. But I did, so I was just thumbing through this book on Fowler's and I found a perfect match. And this New England Fowler, 1650 to 1700 it says american made guns from the 17th century are extremely rare and a f and very few examples having survived this is an exact match so here's why first of all let me bring this over so we can lay it out okay so i'll show you a few of the reasons why this gun is extremely early and so first of all it's um it's smooth bore probably 67 caliber or something like that 69 caliber it's a full octagon barrel very strange usually smooth bore barrels were octagon to round or just full round it has a rear sight which is also very strange but here we go here's the here's the fun stuff so this would have been a dog lock like this so this is a very early style lock from the from the 17th century and I was looking at it and I, so on this side you could see no side plate and I saw the two holes and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's probably not a dog lock because they always had three. But on this side, look at that, there's a nail that would have fastened the back of the lock. So it was probably a lock similar to this, a dog lock. The other thing that I that caught me as being very unusual and early is the trigger guard. So you could see this hole right here was for the bolt that went that fastened the barrel and the bolt went through the bottom, not from the top down. And if you look at this gun, same exact style. So here's the there's the bolt right there. You could see it. There's the bolt going up through the stock. So that's where the bolt would have gone and the back of the, the tang is threaded. So the bolt would have gone from the top. Look at this trigger guard, how primitive that is. It's almost like a carryover from match locks. And here we have the exact same style trigger guard with this little finial on the end. So you have this very thin trigger guard with a w very wide bow here. A little bit different this has a pointed finial there this one doesn't no trigger plate and then you have so at the back of the barrel look at this carving it's just kind of like a very simple carving not a not anything too fancy flip this one over look at that same thing i've never seen carving like that i've seen all sorts of relief carving around the barrel tang but never just something so simple look at this how the the side where the lock bolts were is kind of re relieved from the rest of the stock this is very unusual so I think we have a perfect match here so of course one of the uh, one of the things um, that anyone would ask to kind of contest the claim of this being an early, a very, very early American gun. Well, it could just be European and brought over uh, by someone. Well, no, because it's actually, the wood is maple. And maple was a wood that was used only in the colonies. So you'll never find an English gun stocked in maple or a continental gun stocked in maple. Only in America did we stock these guns in maple. So the barrel and lock were probably European but the trigger guard and the actual stock is American. So this was basically one of the first guns you could say that was made. I mean, basically taking parts from a gun and making it into something that will fire is, should be enough to qualify as gun making and, or gunsmithing. And this was probably one of the first guns ever made in America. So it would date from, according to this book, from 1650 to 1700. I mean, that is an incredibly early time. There's all sorts of stories that I'm tracking down um, of people hunting in the frontier of Connecticut. One example is 
the um, when the when the law when the Harwinton lead mine was found, which is now known as the Lost Harwinton Mine, the two explorers were out hunting. Uh, they were from Farmington, and they were out in the frontier with what's Harwinton now. And they were out hunting. They may have actually used this exact same gun. We don't know, but it's from that right era. They may have used a gun very similar to this. And they were out hunting. They found a piece of black lead, and they went on to bring that back to the to the Farmington, uh, the town of Farmington. And a local Farmington resident bought an enormous tract of land, uh, the Mattituck. Uh, tract of land and that Mattituck deed is one of the earliest land grants in Connecticut 1657 I believe and which went on to become Waterbury and the surrounding towns they may have been using this exact gun this is 17th century a 17th century American gun I mean there's there's so many examples I mean this could have been used during King Philip's war there's so many stories that this gun may hold it's I've never seen anything like it outside of a museum so what turned out to be one of the least exciting guns in appearance-wise, actually when I got back and started looking through my, my books, turned out to be an incredible find. I don't know if I'll ever find another 17th century American gun like this. I'm gonna keep looking, but this is amazing. So I'll go ahead and show the gun one more time. Look at the stock here, how this is, this was actually finished by scraping. You could tell, look at the, I mean, it may have been refinished by scraping, but you could see these marks were made by a dull scrape, a nicked scraper. So these marks in the stock were made because there were some nicks in the scraper that they were finishing the stock with. So it was probably uh, mostly chiseled into shape and then they would have smoothed it by scraping. They really didn't have sandpaper back then. Uh, sandpaper would probably have been available for like ship work and stuff like that, but any local craftsman wouldn't really have access to it. Look at this thing. I mean, it may be the original finish. It has an amazing patina. I mean, this has never really been messed with by anyone. It does look like a different lock was fitted here. You could see this bolt. This bolt hole is backwards a little bit, so it may have had a different lock fitted at one time, but it was always flint. It was never converted to percussion. I mean, this thing would have been ancient by the time the percussion uh, conversions were being done. And it has this nice molding here that would have ran the entire length of the, the ramrod groove. And look at this barrel, full octagon, not octagon to round. And it had a rear sight, which is really surprising because these weren't that accurate. So usually you just kind of point and shoot. We should probably see if there's European proofs on the barrel. We might be able to date it. Yeah, there is a proof right there. One other exciting thing to note is that these guns were in a pile and this barrel was not with the stock. It was just in a pile of parts. And I laid out all the barrels and it matched. It, it fit perfectly in the stock and I got really, really happy to have put back something that belonged to something else rather than just losing the parts or, or you know, um, buying just the stock as a conversation piece and not really 
looking for the barrel, I made it a point to really scour this, this lot to try to find this barrel. So I was successful in that. So yeah, this is um, a really exciting find. It's one of the, it, it's by far the earliest gun in my collection. It's probably one of the earliest artifacts that I have in my collection of, um, of early American stuff. So I'm going to keep looking for artifacts like this. And of course, I'm still on the hunt for the oldest mine in Connecticut, the Clark Blacklead Mine, which would have dated to roughly the same time that this gun was in use, the 1650s. So let's keep using LiDAR to find America's oldest mines and we'll see what we find. And we'll also keep scouring old houses uh, here in New England for artifacts that date back to the 17th century. So I'll keep you updated if I find anything new.